Surely, certainly we praise, the praise belongs to Allah. We praise him. We seek his help. We seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God, no deity, nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wasallam is his servant and his messenger. Allah tells us in the Quran, "Audhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim." Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayuha al-ladina aminu taqulaha haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutuna. O you who believe, regard your duty to Allah in truth as it should be regarded, and do not die except, except in a state of full submission to Him. We thank Allah for this day of Juma. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week. We thank Allah for providing us another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude to him for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, the most compassionate, the most beneficent, the most gracious, the most loving, the universally merciful, and the specifically merciful. We pray and we strive so perhaps others are guided to this mercy and to this blessing. Allah tells us in the Quran, Inna mu'minina ikhwatun. The believers are but one brotherhood. We are brothers and sisters of one another. Every one of us here and all over the world, all two billion believers on this earth, we share a common bond that is thicker than blood and water. We share at Islam. None of us chose our race, our color, our height, our nationality, our ethnicity. None of us chose our birthplace, our parents, our siblings, our time of birth or the circumstances surrounding that birth. But in the midst of all these circumstances and decisions made for us, we all made one decision. We all consciously decided to be Muslims. 
we decided to be Muslims. We chose this. We selected this of all the deans, all the religions, all the ways of life on earth. We chose to be brothers and sisters of two billion people who dress like us, who look like us, who think like us, who drink like us, who pray like we do. As such, we feel the pain and the joy of two billion people all around the world. When a positive light is shown on Muslims on the other side of the earth, we rejoice. We feel that my brother or my sister is receiving praise and goodness. We feel this in our hearts. And when our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers, our sons and daughters feel pain on the other side of the planet, we feel that pain. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you see the believers as regards their being merciful amongst themselves and showing love amongst themselves and being kind, resembling one body, so that if any part of that body is not well, then the whole body shares its sleeplessness and its fever. We are to be merciful and kind to one another, as our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. When we show mercy and kindness, Allah shows mercy and kindness to us. And love. The word that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uses for love is wad. It is an attribute of Allah, al wadu the most loving, the most affectionate. Our Prophet tells us to love our brothers and sisters. Hub is one of the words Allah uses in the Quran for love, but he also uses this word wad. Hub is the emotion. Wad is the physical manifestation of that love, an outward expression of inner emotion. In other words, it's the personification of love. That's what the believers should have for one another. We don't just say we love, we show that we love. We genuinely feel hurt and sickness and sadness for our brothers all around the world. We are one body. When one part hurts, then all of us feel the pain. When over 71,000 people are injured and over 22,000 people are killed, mostly Muslims, as well as non-Muslims, when people return to Allah as a wajib so rapidly, so violently, so unexpectedly, we all feel the pain. We feel the sorrow. We feel the distress. We must find a way to express our love, our compassion, our mercy, and kindness. There was a story of a skeptic, a cynic, one who doubted the plan of Allah the will of Allah, the qadr of Allah. And he was watching the news. And he said he saw all of this devastation around the world, all of the death and disasters and disease. And he said, why doesn't God do something about this? And someone said to him, he has done something. He sent you. There is no coincidence in that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam used attributes of Allah to say what the believers should be doing. Mercy, personified love, and kindness, they are all nouns that are meaningless without action, meaningless without a recipient. You can't possibly show mercy without someone to receive the mercy someone who is in need of mercy. You can't love without someone to love and someone who is in need of love. You can't be kind without someone to receive your kindness and someone who needs your kindness. Do we see the believer is favored and privileged in understanding every atrocity, every problem, every situation, every dilemma, those people without Iman are hopeless. 
distraught because they have no answers. They have little understanding of this dunya, let alone the hereafter. Allah is the apex of mercy, of love, of kindness. In his compassion, in his love for us, he allows us to share his mercy, his love, his kindness. He enables us, empowers us to demonstrate his power like the angels do. But the angels have no choice. We do. We can be saddened and paralyzed, or we can stand and show our Muslim family, our human family, love, mercy, and kindness. I think sometimes we take our deen for granted. We take the blessings that Allah bestowed upon us for granted. Or we don't realize the treasures that we possess. I wrote a book, I give khutbahs, I do talims with these elaborate explanations, deep explanations. But my wife quoted something I said to someone that she worked with that seemed to me to be rather simple. But to her it was mind blowing. She said, my husband said, we need to think about our thinking. That's it. That's all. Right? And this seemed to impress her coworker. Or maybe it was the time that she needed to hear it. But that small thing could be life changing. Imam W.D. Muhammad said, words make people, words make mind, and words make people. The words you say can change people. We must be mindful of this. As Muslims, I am certain that this incident is not unique to myself. Every new Muslim that comes through the door, I ask them, are you that special person in your family? The person that the family comes to for guidance, for clarity, for morality, for assistance in anything. They almost always are that person the beacon of light, the epicenter of morality, the source of strength for their family, their friends, and their community. This kind of person loves Alice Nunn, and it's like a light that is shining, a signal that is shining in the sky. To us, it's like a moth connected to that light. Those people, they are and we are unconsciously uncontrollably drawn to that light. We and they understand the will of Allah and that duty that we have to Allah's will. And just as important, we understand that this light is a test. Let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ayya sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ajma'in. The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian of all, of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, upon his family, upon his companions, upon his followers, all of us, all together, all over the world. My brother, my blood brother, returned to Allah on Wednesday. And alhamdulillah, I received and I am constantly and continuously receiving mercy, love, and kindness from Muslims and non-Muslims, friends and family. And I am truly grateful and truly blessed. An imam called me to give condolences. He had recently been through a similar situation and said the most beautiful words to me. He said, we know what Allah says, that we cannot say we believe and not be tested. That may sound strange to non-Muslims, but to the believer it sounds wonderful. To me it sounded wonderful. 
it is quintessentially our duty as believers to one another to be reminders, reminders of our duty, a reminder that I knew this was coming. We know that Allah will test everyone, every one of us with everything. Everything in this dunya is a test. Wealth and poverty are tests. Sickness and good health, both are tests. Allah says, it is he who has made you successors upon the earth, and he raises you to ranks in degrees, that he may test you of what he has given you. So your promotion and your demotion are a test. Will you be faithful as a believer when you are given leadership? And if that leadership is taken from you, will you still be faithful? Or will you take your ball and go home? Allah says in the Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَاءَ لَكُمْ أَمَاتَ وَهِدَتَ وَلَكِ لَا يَبْلُوَكُمْ بِمَا أَتَّقُمْ If Allah had willed, he would have made you one community. But his, his will was to test you with what he has given you. Allah made us different and diverse, and he has favored us in different ways. We all have attributes, systems, cultures that we can benefit from, each of us can benefit from, humanity can benefit from, that is bestowed on specific groups to bless others. So are we going to share these blessings with the whole? Let Allah's love, mercy, and kindness be shown through us or we're going to take our ball and go home. What we are given is a test from our brother. Our diversity itself is a test. And Allah continues in this ayah. So race with one another in doing good. That's the competition. That's the race. Race with one another in doing what is good. Allah tells us in the Quran, or what is translated, we have certainly tested you with a touch of fear and famine and loss of property and life and crops. Give good news to those who patiently endure. Allah says, what you fear is a test. I should be ashamed to say this, but I'm afraid of spiders. I was afraid of spiders. Was. Past tense. Was. Allah gave me two tests to overcome this fear. There was a spider in my house. And my wife is deathly afraid of insects. Both of us on the top of the table. All right? Somebody got to come down and handle this spider. So, ultimately, eventually, I got down and took care of the spider. But to make sure that I'd overcome this fear, Allah as a wajib gave me a job as a cable install installer. <laughs> so I'm underneath all these houses with spiders and everything else you can think of. Alhamdulillah, I think I'm thoroughly, I thoroughly passed that test. I'm not afraid of spiders, at least not as much as what I was previously. But Allah, he puts loss in this ayah, he puts loss of wealth and possession before he puts loss of life. Pretty strange position of these tests. And then he puts loss of fruits or crops. Why is that? Some people don't want to live without their wealth or their possessions. Material things are more or worth more to them than their life itself. They don't want to live without wealth or possession or material items. Allah says our children is a test, our spouses are tests, our friends, our family, what you see on television, on the internet, what you eat and drink, all are tests. People would ask me, why don't you eat pork? I didn't say because they are filthy animals, or because they are unclean, or because they eat filth, or because they don't have sweat glands. I simply said, I don't eat it because Allah told me not to. 
there are a plethora of things that Allah has made permissible for me to eat. He said, don't eat this. It's just that simple. I see it as similar to Adam, alayhi salam, and Hawa. They could eat all that they wanted to eat, except for this one tree that they were forbidden to eat. And they failed the test. I won't fail such an easy test, inshallah. I didn't need a reason, except that Allah said, don't do it. Seems like a very easy test to pass. And I want to learn from my parents. There was a king of the children of Israel who was marching his army into battle. Allah tested them with a river stream. Allah commanded that they fill their hands with water to drink, and only their hands. Allah said, don't drink any more than this. All of them but a few failed this test and disobeyed Allah. And they were not allowed to fight in the battle. It is uncertain what happened to them, but Allah says the king and the believers made it across the river. So perhaps something like the pork and its negative effect on our health, perhaps that water and the river had toxic remedies or toxic problems or impact on those on that army. Whatever the case, they didn't get across the river. Allah says the believers did. They passed that test that Allah gave them. And then they were tested again. Their numbers had dwindled, had diminished, and they were facing a large army. It had diminished to about 300 people. They saw a huge warrior in his army, and they said, we can't beat them. Remember, these are believers. They had already passed one test, but they faced another test, and fear of loss of life was at hand. And then something remarkable happened. Among the believers is an even higher group. Allah describes them as Aladina Yahununa wa Anahu Mula Taqullah. Those who are certain that they will meet Allah. In this group, this group said to the believers, How many times has a small force vanquished and defeated a mighty army by the will of Allah? And Allah is always, always with those who are steadfast. In this story, this short story, we have the disbelievers who drank too much water and disobeyed Allah. We have the believers who drank as Allah commanded, but then they are afraid of defeat. Then we have the mutsinin, the excellent ones, those who are certain that they would meet Allah. And they had no trepidation on meeting him that very day. They encouraged the believers to advance ahead. And they advanced ahead and they called to Allah saying, Our Lord, shower us with perseverance, make our steps firm, and give us victory over the disbelieving people. And Allah says, so they defeated them by Allah's will, and David killed Goliath. The young Muslim, the excellent one, was Dawood, David, and he killed the giant Goliath. And Allah says he blessed Dawood with kingship and wisdom and taught him what he will. And Allah says, had Allah not repelled a group of people by the might of another, corruption would have dominated the earth. But Allah is gracious to all. For passing this test and multiple tests, Allah as a wajel blessed Dawood even more. But in this story is also a lesson for the believers today. Allah stopped corruption by the hands of the righteous. Those brave enough to face corruption and defeat it. The small army defeated the large army with the, with the permission of Allah to stop corruption all over the earth. 
Brothers and sisters, everything and everybody, every circumstance is a test for us, including life and death. Allah says he created death and life in order that he may test who is the best in their deeds. That verse that the imam reminded me of, it says, do people think only they say we believe and they will be left without being tested? The word used here is the root of fitna. All the other times, the word Allah used bala. Bala means to test, to try, to prove, to experiment, to test whether the resulting person is praiseworthy or a disgrace. Allah uses the word fitna in this ayah. We know what fitna means, right? When a brother, everywhere he goes, he brings fitna, right? Fitna means to try and to test, but it also means to persecute, to, be, to bring mischief, distress, and affliction. So life is a test of good and bad, of abundance and scarcity. But in this instance, Allah as a wajil says that those, those people who say that they believe, certainly bad things are going to happen to you. You will face persecution. persecution. You will face affliction and distress, and disaster. And Allah says, and we certainly tested before you, those people before you. Adam, alayhi salam, his earthly life was a test. Ayub lost everything, alayhi salam. Yunus, or Yusuf, alayhi salam, was betrayed by his brothers and lost his freedom twice. Ibrahim was tested with his son, with his people, with his father, and with the fire. Nur, alayhi salam, was tested with mockery and disbelief of his people. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi salam, lost all of his sons as babies. All of his children, except for Fatima, radiallahu anha, died before him. He suffered defeat and humiliation. He suffered the year of sorrow. But ultimately, he and all the prophets of Allah, all the people of Allah, all of us, all on earth, all this entire family will prevail. We will succeed. Allah says we are the successful. And Allah's promise is true. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, he used this word, ajaba. And in two different um, narrations of this hadith, it says two different things. It says how strange. It begins how strange in one narration. In another narration, it says how wonderful. Because, because this word ajaba means both strange and wonderful. It depends on the perception or the who is accepting this. It says how wonderful is the case of a believer. There is good for him in everything. And this only applies to the believer. If prosperity comes to him, he expresses gratitude to Allah, and that is good for him. If adversity befalls him, he endures it patiently, and that is better for him. So it's wonderful to us and strange to the disbeliever. Wonderful to the believer and important, more importantly, wonderful to Allah. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, no fatigue. I forget that. That's why I'm saying this with such emphasis because I want to remember it. No fatigue, no disease, no sorrow, no sadness, no hurt, no distress befalls a Muslim, not even a prick of a thorn, without some of his sins being forgiven. No fatigue. You know how you get tired in this clip bar, you ready to go to sleep? Allah is blessing you even then. For your weariness, Allah erases your sin. The believers have to understand this and understand how much we are blessed. May Allah continue to bless us that we always put our trust in Allah as a wajil through the highs and lows because there are bumps in the road. ربنا اعطني في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة 
Makina adaban ng Makina sila Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah Ayya ala salam, ayya ala al-falah Qad kamati salah, qad kamati salah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah
Cash App is dollar sign M W S A L A A M. If you want to mail it in, uh, you can mail it in directly to the Mass Gear at 614 West 35th Street, Norfolk, Virginia 23508, or uh, PO Box 1802, Norfolk, Virginia 23501. Uh, make sure you note on the Zakat slip if you are doing the pledge. Also on Sunday, inshallah, Imam Ezekiel Pasha will be here uh, around 11 o'clock, so we want to be here at 11. Uh, he's going to be um, talking about uh, Hajj, about the um, conference, about a lot of different topics, whatever we're actually interested in. He'll be uh, at our disposal to answer questions. So please attend if you can. If you know somebody who's not here, let them know as well. We have uh, let people know via email, on social media. We want to make sure that we have a good turnout for the brother coming from. New York dinner. on Sunday. Dinner. What? Dinner. Oh yeah, there'll be dinners here as well. How much? Uh, Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for the dinners. Taking pre-orders. Okay. Great. We're taking pre-orders as well. Um, Brother Lewis, who's normally at the door, I'm, I'm sure you all might remember him. He's uh, not doing well, so make sure you have him in your dua. But he's feeling a little bit under the weather. I'm not saying he's not doing well. Say again. I'm not sure. Uh, Brother Wally just told me about it before I came in here. I can get some details from him then. Um, tomorrow morning and Sunday, inshallah, I'll open up for Fajr. Uh, we will have art class. Is that right, Brother Rabbi? We have art class tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Yes, sir. Saturday. Saturday. What did I say? I said Sunday. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Saturday. <laughs> art class, 11 o'clock. I write this stuff down and still say the wrong thing. Um, also, after. Uh, after the art class, we are doing a Quranic recitation. Uh, we had a good turnout last last week, and we want to continue with this. Hopefully, we can get more people involved, especially with Ramadan around the corner. Um, there also will be a health presentation on February 26th. Yes, sir. I did. I didn't forget about it, but I can't. I can't attend it today. That's why I didn't mention it. Um, so we, at one point, at some point, we will continue. We will start again with the uh, game nights. After um, Lua prayer, up until uh, Isha, we were doing game night um, for a couple months. So we need to um, restore that. And the young brother here said, get on it, so I will. <laughs> um, don't forget, there's free books out into the foyer for people who are interested in it. Or if you know someone who, there's good Dawa materials as well. They're all free. Take as many as you want. Give them to people who need them. Uh, because the people outside here need this, let us know. Uh, did I forget anything else? I know Sister Jackie. Every time I say I forget something, I did. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. We're going to be at Janazah for uh, Brother Green. Oh, Janazah, absolutely. Um, we will probably be doing the, be doing the Washington and the Shrouding tomorrow. I'm glad you mentioned that because our brother uh, Amin just called me before I came and gave the football uh, tomorrow morning because we won't be able to do it after Juma today. Uh, it's going to be around 9 o'clock. We're going to try to meet at um, Paul Riddick's. Um, uh, funeral home to wash and shroud the body. Uh, his family is coming out of town. We're going to do it when they are there or exactly after they're there. Um, so anybody that is able to help, we definitely need as many hands as possible at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Do you know when the body will be in, uh, in town? Um, okay. The date for, so the family wanted to take them to Roosevelt Funeral Home. I don't know if this answers your question. And they don't, they're not open on the weekend. So they have to, if we're going to have the um, the Janaza is going to be on Monday or Tuesday, and they said it had to be 48 hours, so it's probably going to be on Tuesday. And the brother died a, a couple of days, a, a day or two ago. All right. Yes, sir. All right. What brother is that? Uh, brother Ali Salam, Ali, Ali Kareem. Kareem. Ali Kareem. Ali Kareem. So, so we to go here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Newport, 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 he's a man. He lives in Newport. But he was, so I want to make sure that that's clear. Yeah. Yeah. He was? Yeah, he was yeah, the brother, man up here. Ali Kareem? Mm -hmm. Pioneer. There you go. I'm getting me confused. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 right. Let's try to have a good turnout on Sunday. Inshallah. Inshallah. What do you say? Mm -hmm. no, he, no, he's I need to do it? He's had a he had left this community for a long time. He just came back. So.